our last major topic around the Scrum framework itself, the definition of done. This is a confusing concept and many people misunderstand the definition of done. The definition of done is actually about transparency. Scrum requires our artifacts, most importantly our product increment, to be transparent in order to work effectively. If we're going to have these short sprints of work and to get feedback, we need to really understand what we're looking at. So this means we must be open about one, what done actually means, not some idealized version of it. Imagine you have a scrum team doing one week long sprints and inside the scrum team every sprint they're building software, they do coding, they do unit testing, which is a basic kind of testing. They look at the user experience, sorry, the user experience, the design of the product that they're building. Within a one week sprint, they do a mini project and that's what they actually accomplish. They, they code the unit test, they do the UX and they do the design. But they have some things that happen outside the team. So for example, maybe outside the team there's a subject matter expert that they need to interact with. Someone from the business, for example, who really understands the marketplace and the customers. And when the scrum team makes a request for information to the subject matter expert, that person gets back within an hour. This is good, in fact it's great. And if you think about this, it's true that the subject matter expertise is outside the team, but because of the speed with which that person responds, it doesn't have a huge impact on the work of the team. In a one week long period, if they have a question, they're going to get an answer, no problems. There might be other things going on outside the team that aren't as good though. In software development in large organizations, there's often a separate department who does database administration, the DBA department. And that department is often a huge number of people who work kind of anonymously or semi-anonymously. Your scrum team doing development needs to ask the DBA department for changes to the database. And that department has a three week long service level agreement. That means, unfortunately, that if in a single sprint that's meant to be a complete encapsulated project, if that team needs some database changes made, it's not going to happen within the sprint. It's going to take a request and three weeks and possibly the third sprint after the current sprint before they even get a response to the request. This is a problem. Let's look at another problem situation. Often when we're doing software development in Canada, um, we have to localize into French as well. Sometimes this is for regulatory reasons. And of course, if you're doing an international product, there's lots of languages that you might need to translate your product into. This is called localization. Most organizations outsource that to a vendor, a localization vendor. And a scrum team might not be able to do that every sprint. They might not even be able to ask for it regularly. Instead, they might have to do it once. They have a contract, they send a big batch of localization information and the vendor does it and returns it once. This is also clearly a problem because the team won't have potentially releasable increments without that localization work. Lastly, many organizations doing Scrum often have multiple Scrum teams working on the same system or product and there's dependencies between them. And we can talk about different kinds of dependencies, but a very common one is between different components or layers in a software product. You might have your scrum team doing one week sprints, they're working on the front end of the product, and then they submit a request to a back end scrum team to get some work done. Where does that request go? Well, it goes on a product backlog. And that product backlog doesn't have a service level agreement. There's no contract or commitment for that scrum team to get that work done in a specific amount of time. So at best, with a one week sprint, 
The scrum team submits to the other one. It goes on the top of the backlog, which means it gets started in the next sprint. It's completed successfully, we hope, and then delivered back to the scrum team in the second sprint following. So there's at least two weeks delay. Um, if your sprints are longer, like one month, now you have up to two months delay to get something delivered. And so this is a huge kind of problem as well. So how does this relate to the definition of done? Well, the definition of done refers to what is within the Scrum team. And so we can illustrate it as a kind of checklist. We have a list of all the things that are required to release a product increment to the market. In software, we might have code, configuration, unit testing, acceptance testing, etc., localization of various kinds, standards that need to be accomplished, compliance and documentation. Within the Scrum team, they're doing coding, unit testing, usability standards, and technical documentation, but all the other stuff isn't getting done within the team every sprint. We sometimes call that undone work. That stuff is not part of the definition of done. Again, we have to think about it, what actually happens within the team. So, many organizations create a hybrid model and they insert Scrum sprints within a traditional project management approach. They have a preparation phase where they do a bunch of stuff like design and requirements gathering. Then they launch the development phase and they do some sprints, but those sprints are very limited. They're coding, basic testing, things that I was mentioning before. And then finally, there's a project wrap-up phase where they do things like all the compliance sign-offs and all of the documentation work. This is not Scrum. It's a hybrid. You're using the Scrum process, but it's not the Scrum framework. Because in this situation, the definition of done is not equivalent to potentially releasable increments. Over time, we want to change this situation. The Scrum Master is responsible for helping the team expand the definition of done and to make it so that done looks more like releasable over time. And that's an organizational work, that's skill sets, there's many aspects to that.